Hi. So uh, that was a great introduction. Thank you so much, Lucia. Uh, my name is Phoebe Tickell, and I'm a member of the Inspiral Network. Put your hand up if you've heard of Inspiral. Okay, basically none of you. So <laughs> maybe I wish I'd, I'd uh, prepared more nuts and bolts about Inspiral, but that's okay. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about what I think is the pathway to the future of work and the future of organizations. Um, and I'm speaking, from, speaking as a member of Ins uh, the Inspiral Network, which I think has been a successful eight-year experiment of what could be a future form of an organization, a networked organization for all. Um, so this is the marathon-themed work. So let's start with work. Work, the current paradigm of work kind of sucks, right? Put your hand up if you've ever worked a job that you really hate. Just look around, that's a, that's a lot of people. Um, I also started off my working career in a job that I hated as a consultant. Then I went into academic research. I also found that annoying for various reasons. Now I'm part of this crazy global networked experiment in Spiral, which I'm gonna talk to you about. Um, but yeah, the current paradigm of work is bad. I think we all agree that it's pretty bad. It's bad for the individual. Individuals are pretty disengaged. I think there's some stat knocking around about um, uh, employees in America, there's like 32% of them are engaged. Oh, that was exciting. 32% uh, of employees in America are, enga uh, are engaged in their uh, work. And if you think about it, that's like the majority of our waking hours on Earth is taken up by our work. So this is, I, I would say, I always would go as far to say that this is kind of a tragedy or, you know, a crisis, and it's not a crisis we talk about a lot. You know, usually we're talking about the climate change crisis or the sustainability crisis, but what about the crisis of the complete waste of human potential? Uh, it's also, you know, the, the current status quo of work is also kind of bad for the companies. Like, it, it's bad for the individual. We're unhappy, we're disengaged, we're not welcome with all of our complexities. You know, whether you have kids or a, or a sick grandmother, or you don't like working Wednesdays, whatever it is, we're complex beings. We wanna be accepted in the place that we work. We wanna be accepted in society and we wanna be at our best. But then if you think about companies as well, it's bad, the current paradigm is bad for companies. You know, we, we're operating in hierarchies, right? Like most organizations are hierarchical and this is what's really special about Inspiral is that we don't operate in a hierarchy. We do not have leaders. We don't have people telling a whole chain of command what to do. Um, and if you think about hierarchies in companies, the reason they're kind of ineffective is because you centralize the decision making and all the intelligence to one person or a couple people at the top. So imagine if you could decentralize all that intelligence of an organization so that every single player in the organization is acting at their best and is making decisions. So you've got this total unleashing of collective intelligence. And that's particularly important in this current time because it's a complex time. It's complex, you know, that it's uncertain with technology, we've got kind of massive acceleration of innovation, things are changing all the time. We need organizations that are at the edge of their game, that are responsive and are agile, so they can respond to what's happening in the world. Um, what else? I think that's enough on companies and why they're bad. What about why the current paradigm of work is bad for the world at large? Again, we're living in a time where we're facing massive, massive challenges, and most corporations are basically predating nature to make money. I don't wanna go into a whole anti-capitalist talk here and kind of scare you off that we're some kind of hippie activist network, but we should really be creating corporations that harness human creativity for the good of the earth and for the good of people and for creativity and innovation and actually good stuff. We want people working in the, in the world of work who are aligned they're aligned in their skills with their values, with the values that we want to live in on the planet. Um, this doesn't mean that we all have to go and join Greenpeace, but it just means that if your corporation is basically built upon exploiting natural resources for profit, it's unlikely that the humans in that organization are gonna be working in line with their values. Or, yeah, I mean, depends. I don't think, I don't think people in most corporations are in working in line with their values. So we've got a kind of, a bit of a crisis. So what I'm here to tell you is another world is possible. Another kind of organization is possible. An organization where people are welcomed in their whole complex selves. An organization where you don't have a chain of command, whether there's a boss at the top telling you know, teams of people what to do. You don't have a, a mass of employees who are totally disengaged. 
hate Mondays, just want the week to end, and, and can't wait to get home at the end of the day. And the thing is also, in, this, in the paradigm of work as it is, even the people at the top, even the winners, lose out. You know, if you're a high-powered CEO, to, you know, people, people spend their lives without even seeing their kids grow up. Like, I, I have, yeah, I have friends who are both working exactly in what they want to do, and I have friends who gave that up and are now high-powered CEOs, people working in Silicon Valley, and they're kind, of, they're kind of living the dream of, like, what's really successful, and they're miserable. So there has to be another way. Uh, so imagine a new organization, right, that, that is full of empowered individuals. It's full of people who are thriving, who are at their best, who, are, who have their well-being taken, taken care of, who are caring for each other. And imagine, imagine going to work and having your workplace be the actual, uh, the actual place of your self-development. So imagine you go to work, and instead of kind of having to basically to get paid to do, to do what you're told, imagine you're going to work, you're getting paid, but you're actually evolving as an individual. You're learning how to collaborate, you're learning new skills, you're self-directing your learning, you're choosing how you want to work, where you want to work, and who you want to work with. Um, I wanted to mention something about biology just because that's, the, that's my background, so Lucia mentioned I, I come from the world of biological networks. Um, and what's interesting to me is in the, in the biological world, we're also seeing a total shift in paradigm from how we used to see the world, which was a kind of Darwinian uh, survival of the fit fittest competitive paradigm where individuals are competing for resources to survive. We're now moving to a, a view of the world which sees the world as a complex, entangled web of relationships. So the world, living beings and the world around us is actually built upon cooperation. My uh, kind of scientific idol, Lynn Margulis, uh, in 19, I think it was 67 or 68, she published a paper about symbiosis and about how cells are actually uh, made up of um, kind of combinations of beings. So all of our cells have bacteria living in them. So even our bodies are created not just by us, but by uh, kind of complex relationships of beings. So where was I going with that? Um, yeah. So if, if that's what's happening in the science world, we're having this shift in paradigm, why not see that in the economic world too? Why don't we see an evolution from the current kind of exploitative economy and organizations to something like a mycelial economy, an economy that's made out of networks, relationships, cooperation? And that's where Inspiral comes in. The last reason a kind of another organization is necessary and is possible is because we want these organizations to be helping with the current challenges that we're facing. So people aligning their work with their values is good for them, it's good for the company, it's good for the planet. So, Inspiral. None of you know what Inspiral is. Great. Inspiral is a living lab of, for a new way of working, and we've been operating for the last eight years. And I would say that it's, a, it's been a successful experiment. It started off as a group of freelancers all the way in New Zealand. So I've been to New Zealand, that's how I got involved in Inspiral, but now we're evolving into being a global international network. And in fact, I'm gonna talk to you about how I'm bringing Inspiral to Europe, and I'm keen to talk to anybody who wants to get involved. Um, so it started off as a group of freelancers, actually software developers, who decided that instead of working for companies doing contracts, they were gonna leave their jobs, they were gonna pool contracts together, so they were gonna work together as a kind of freelancer cooperat cooperative, and then use their spare time to work on volunteer projects for the good of the planet. So it was this kind of Robin Hood model, let's get together, let's choose the way we work, how we work, let's do it non-hierarchically in a network, and let's get contracts as this kind of weird, non-incorporated organization in Spiral, and then use our free time to volunteer. So, so you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. Now, it's evolved into a, what I would call a networked organization, and you're seeing more and more of these pop up. Part of the reason you're seeing these pop up is because the current work paradigm sucks, but also because uh, we, we have new tools at hand. We have the internet, we have communication tools, we have collab collaboration tools. I do most of my work at the moment on, on the road, using my laptop, as long as I have a strong Wi-Fi connection so that I can do video calls, and as long as I can connect to Slack and other online tools, I'm fine. I can, I can work on projects wherever I want. I can choose to be here and have in-person meetings, or I could choose to be in New Zealand, but this is the way I want to live my life. Um, so, Inspiral. It's now a, it is now an incorporated legal liability company with a charitable constitution, 
And the way it works is we've got 25 members, so I'm one of the 25 members of Inspiral, who kind of sit in the center of Inspiral. We're the core. We steward the culture of Inspiral. We make sure that the finances never go. We're, we're, we're kind of stewarding the survival and the, the well-being of the Inspiral organism or the Inspiral network. Uh, most of those members are currently in New Zealand. We've got a couple, we've got myself and a couple others in Spain, France, um, yeah, that's about it. We've got a couple in the Bay Area in California. And so that's the 25 at the center. So we're the, we, we actually own uh, shares of the Inspiral Corporation, uh, the Inspiral Limited Foundation. So we co-own Inspiral uh, and we all share leadership, decision-making, we collaborate on finance, financing. Um, I'll come on to that in a second, actually. And we also have 150 contributors. So the Inspiral network is 200 people in total. We've got 25 at the core, 150 kind of in the surrounding cloud. And to become a member, you have to be voted in by 70% of members. But to become a contributor, you just have to be invited by a member. So we've got a really permeable membrane of people getting involved. Um, so uh, how much do I have time? Yes. So over the last eight years, we've successfully experimented with all parts of the organizational work paradigm. We have experimented with leadership. We have something called catalysts. So we're non-hierarchical. We don't have bosses, but we do kind of uh, delegate power and responsibility to certain members of our, our network, and we call these members catalysts. We pay catalysts from the central fund, and the central fund is funded by all of our startups, which pay a percentage into the middle. Um, and so catalysts are, we like to talk about this thing called servant leadership. So it's kind of like, instead of leading by oppression and telling people what to do and trying to control and command, we have people in service of Inspiral. They're in service of keeping our network healthy, keeping people up to date with each other, uh, notifying the network of opportunities, and um, yeah, publicizing Inspiral. And what's, what's an interesting pattern here is that we make sure that catalysts rotate every six months. So what, what I find really exciting about Inspiral is that during the experiment, we've, been, we, we've developed tools, like online tools. We've developed our own online decision-making tool and our own online collaborative financing tool, which is now used by hundreds of companies around the world. Um, but more, for me, more exciting is that we've been experimenting with these social processes and social patterns for a while. How do you keep an organism or an organization of, of networked humans across the planet in touch? How do you keep that healthy? How do you keep people feeling as if they belong to something, feeling that the culture and the kind of health of the network is good? Uh, so we've developed all sorts of social technologies. One of them I was just about to talk about is that the catalysts actually cycle every six months. So instead of having people slowly kind of build up too much power in the network, you have this kind of fountain approach that you try and cycle power and you try and, try and cycle uh, influence in the network. Um, so we've also, as I mentioned, we've also experimented with decision making. Uh, some of the members of our network created a company called Lumio, which actually quite a lot of people have heard of compared to Inspiral. So Lumio is an online collaborative decision making tool. And the reason, the way it was actually made is that Inspiral started as these kind of tech entrepreneurs and there was the Occupy m movement in 2011, maybe? Yes. Yeah, so uh, during the Occupy mo movement, you had a bunch of activists who during the Occupy movement got really sick of um, how decision making just took so long because they because you had to kind of sit in circles and because they wanted everyone to have a say but you had to be in the room to be able to have a say and you know you had the same sorts of voices speaking every time often kind of patriarchal voices speaking so what they approached in spiral with was like hey guys can you help us build a tool that allows us to do this kind of collaborative uh, consensus decision making online and what Inspiral said to these Occupy activists was no, we won't build it for you, but we'll build it with you. So they joined and that was the beginning of Inspiral kind of growing bigger than just a group of uh, tech entrepreneurs. Um, so in conclusion, Inspiral is this DIY social enterprise network uh, consisting mainly of entrepreneurs and freelancers. So people who want to build their own career or build, kind of self-direct their work. It's special because it's, um, yeah, it's special because it's just different to other organizations in the way it works, in the patterns it uses, in the technologies and tools it uses, and in the freedom that it enables individuals uh, to work in it. Uh, what else? 
I think that I think that covers enough for now. What I did want to say is, I think Inspiral is amazing, but I think it's particularly ins amazing because they've managed to we we. I mean, I joined two years ago, so they managed to build this thing that's that's got kind of global. Um, it's a global player in the economy, all the way from New Zealand. So for something that's built in New Zealand from a group of kind of freelancers and entrepreneurs, it's done pretty well. So there's something in the secret source of Inspiral that's making people happy, making them thrive and, and unleashing creativity and collective intelligence. And what excites me now is that um, I feel really privileged to be bringing that Inspiral DNA to Europe and, and having the, the yeah, feeling lucky to be able to learn from eight years of experimentation in New Zealand and bring that to Europe and see what we can build here. So if you want to find out more about the experiment or join a first meeting at the end of October, just reach out either through my website or through my Twitter or through my email, and I'd be really excited to hear from you. Thank you very much.